Good morning. Welcome to the house of the Lord as we gather together and worship. Uh, happy Valentine's Day in the love of God and our Lord Jesus Christ. We're so grateful to have each and every one of you with us. Uh, this is a big week uh, coming on Wednesday. Uh, Ash Wednesday is the beginning of Lent and we hope you will join us. That's seven o'clock on Wednesday night. We will have um, Ash in position and communion, uh, but we'll be doing a little different where each person receives some ash and uh, prepackaged communion. Also, if you're not able to make it on uh, Wednesday night, but you would like to participate online, uh, at the office we will have uh, both the ashes and the communion available for pickup during the week as well. We're very excited to have everyone with us today and those who gather online as well. Uh, we also want to thank you for filling up the Faith Family um, February boxes. I don't know if you noticed as you were walking in, but we have about three or four large boxes of canned and dry goods uh, to put together uh, for families in need. And if you haven't brought it already, we are doing it through the month of February. So we hope you'll bring those items in. Let us prepare our hearts for worship as we stand now and join in our opening hymn, which is Love Divine, All Loves Excelling. remain standing and share in our Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, 
and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. stewardship uh, campaign started this Sunday and just to celebrate all that God is doing in our ministries and Lynn Mandeville who is our lay leader and stewardship chair would like to share with us. Good morning. COVID-19 has caused us to change many things. We've learned to adapt to our new circumstances. Here at FUMC, we see that repeatedly, and today is a fine example. Ordinarily, we conduct our stewardship drive in the fall so that we can plan the budget for the coming year. But because of COVID, we were unable to do that. So we moved the beginning of our outreach to today. As it turns out, this is the perfect day. It's Valentine's Day the day we celebrate love, the day we plan special gifts for the wonderful people in our lives. We lavish attention, tenderness, greeting cards, flowers, dinners, jewelry, and so much more to express our love. Love is that amazing emotion that generates from our hearts. And where did we get this emotion? Like so many of the wonderful things in our lives, it comes from God. John tells us God is love. He gave us love. God showed us love. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. Love is a unique gift from God. So today, as you contemplate what love means to you, remember God's love. Remember to lavish your expressions of love on him. The psalmist tells us in Psalm 37, 4, take delight in the Lord and he will give you the desires of his heart. God wants to be the desire of your heart. He wants your love. He wants you to seek his face, to spend time with him, to praise him, to worship him. He wants to share your fears, your joys, even your meetings and your meals. He wants to be a real part of your life. And he wants you to continue his work on earth. So today we suggest that you consider expressing your love to God by using your stewardship pledge to keep his church thriving. Give from your heart to him through this church. In a few days, you'll receive a letter from Pastor Jill and me, and your pledge card will be enclosed in that letter. Please prayerfully consider all that God does for us and contribute generously to uplifting his work at FUMC. Over the next few weeks, you'll hear from your fellow parishioners about what God and this church mean to them. Our campaign will conclude on March 14th. And at that point, we'll know what our budget, through your generosity and love, will allow us to accomplish in 2021. Happy Valentine's Day. Peace be with you.
Before I spoke a word, you were singing over me. You have been so, so good to me. Before I took a breath, so so kind to me oh the overwhelming never ending reckless love of God oh it chases me down fights till I'm found leaves a 99 and I couldn't earn it I don't deserve it but still you
Our scripture reading this morning comes to us first from Joshua. Joshua 22, verse 5. But be very careful to keep the commandment and the law that Moses, the servant of the Lord, gave you, to love the Lord your God, to walk in obedience to him, to keep his commands, to hold fast to him, and to serve him with all your heart and with all your soul. From the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 6, verses 19 and 21. Do not store up for yourself treasures on earth where moths and vermin destroy, where thieves break in and steal, but store up for yourself treasures in heaven where moths and vermin do not destroy, where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. And then finally, from the second letter of John, six and this is love that we walk in obedience to god's commands as you have heard from the very beginning his command is that you walk in love the word of god for the people of god thanks be to god let us pray O lord may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your presence. May my words become your message for each of us, your people. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Today is Valentine's Day and Wednesday is Ash Wednesday. It begins the season of Lent and it's so interesting to me that we have just bucket loads of chocolate one day and then within a few days, we're asked to give up something like chocolate. Well, what about this? Valentine's Day. Did you know that Valentine's Day is a Christian feast day? Did you know that? It is. It started because of two men named Valentine uh, and their stories. And then later, the sainthood of one of them. It's interesting. It appears that Valentine's Day is based upon the lives and efforts of the Valentines. Two men, one a bishop and one a pastor. They were known for encouraging Christians during a very difficult time when there was much persecution. One who was a priest married young couples which defied the Roman emperor's demand that every young man serve in his military and remain single. It was a protest. Another wrote notes and letters of encouragement, and there is a miracle associated with him. It is the Bishop Valentine. Supposedly, when he was jailed, he wrote a note, a letter, to the blind daughter of the jailer and the miracle attributed to him was as she received the note she was able to read it so valentine valentine was started because two people were recognized as encouragers as persons who wanted peace and families to multiply rather than young men to go off to war there were things associated with Valentine. Doves, doves which represented peace and pairing or coupling. Today, we even consider chocolate an essential for Valentine. Well, Valentine, believe it or not, in that time and culture in Rome, they believed that chocolate was a gift from God. Well, isn't it? and that you would give something very special to those you love, not just your beloved, but your family and your children. Later, we do find out that chocolate is a natural antidepressant with health benefits. Who knew? We liked it anyway. 
Supposedly, it reduces bad cholesterol. It stimulates your brain and nervous system with serotonin and endorphins. Now, how does this holiday, this Christian holiday, become what it is today? Just like everything else, Hallmark got a hold of it, right? Every single day you can think of, every single season, holiday, it multiplies into a commercial effort. What we want to reclaim as Christians is the original meaning and purpose, not only of Valentine's, but of love. The scripture tells us in 1 John, we love because God first loved us, and God is love. Giving gifts is also seen as a direct correlation to God. In James 1.17, we read, Every good and perfect gift comes from the Father. Loving and giving find their connection to God and to us in Scripture and in our experience. God first gave to us life, breath, creation. The creation itself is an amazing gift and relationships too. We're taught from an early age to care for the things that are valuable, for persons and things that are sentimental to us, dear to us. They are valued and worth something. Even children can tell you who is the most special to them, who is the most valuable, and what is their favorite thing to hold, to keep near. You see, we appreciate and care for what we value. A steward in the scripture literally means a caretaker, someone who takes care of what is entrusted to them. Just as in creation, humanity is asked in Genesis to care and tend for creation, for the animals, for the planet, as well as each other, we too are asked to care for what is dear. What and who do you value? What and who do you care for and tend to in your own life? What and who are you grateful for, appreciative of? This is what love and giving is all about. You see, a good theology of stewardship and taking care begins with the premise that everything belongs to God. All that we have, all that we are, everyone we care about, from the beautiful creation to the relationships and resources that we cherish, all is a gift from God entrusted to us. Even our abilities, even our wise investment of resources. Do you know how many stories there are where God congratulates the person who invests and multiplies? Or the feeding of the 5,000 where Jesus takes what is offered and brings it forth to cover 5,000 people. All is a gift entrusted to us by God. A good steward has printed upon their heart, it is all God's. All the love, all the stuff, everything is God's. For the Jewish community, taught and trained from a young age, it begins in Deuteronomy. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, your mind, your soul, and your strength. It's called the Shema. And Jesus adds from Leviticus, and love your neighbor as yourself. You see, each generation was entrusted to teach it to the next. This love of God, love of neighbor, and even a love, a kindness to yourself. 
because you are a child of God. Even the concept of inheritance had a biblical tone. The inheritance was seen as a trust from generation to generation. Trust. We were asked to bind the teaching of our faith, not just in our memory, but in our commitment to future generations. Now somehow, in the movement from generation to generation, accumulation replaced appreciation. Think about it in your own family. When does this idea of ownership become more important than gratitude? Stewards are caretakers. Owners and possessors sometimes want to take care because there's a benefit. But sometimes there is this taking and this hoarding, even in scripture. Jesus talked about the man who filled his barns and more and more and more. And then one day he dies. And Jesus said, the barns are full, but his life and his family were empty of the greatest treasures provided in faith. Bible teaching begins from the very beginning. In Psalm 24, the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, the world and all who dwell therein. And in Matthew 6, 21, Jesus tells us, where your treasure is, there will be your heart also. Gratitude and appreciation have become rare virtues, yet needed now more than ever. It affects how we live, how we use what we have been entrusted with, and how we treat one another. Gratitude and appreciation are not the only motivators for our generosity and stewardship and caretaking, even for loving relationship, but they are the highest and the healthiest motivation. Think about it in your own relationships. Guilt and obligation, duty or shame or fear can be motivators with God and with each other. But these motivators tend not to lead to a positive attitude or a joyful outlook. To invest in something or someone beyond our self-interest, the appreciation, the adoration, the gratitude is the healthiest motivator. Even St. Paul told us this in 2 Corinthians 9, 7, let each one give as he or she has determined in their heart, not grudgingly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. And this is a cheerful giver, not just in our relationship to God, but to each other, to give in gratitude, in cheer, in joy, our commitment, our devotion, our adoration motivates us to partner with each other and to partner with God, to intentionally invest ourselves in something bigger than me, to connect with God's purpose, God's purpose here and now in this community, through this congregation, when God looks over all creation, the scripture communicates to us that God's most valued and cherished treasure is his crowning achievement in creation. It is humanity. God has everything. God owns everything. And what he holds most dear is us. You see, God wants partners in meaningful relationship. Not a spectator, not a cynic, 
who looks and watches while others participate, but a person willing even to risk in love their time, their effort to make the difference. We too, in spiritual maturity, will survey all before us and declare that the greatest treasure we have is a loving bond between us and each other with God. Until then, we are most torn and tormented, even restless. In one of his plays, Oscar Wilde has this conversation going between two men, and one of the men says, the cynic knows the price of everything, but he doesn't know the value. The cynic knows the price of everything and the value of nothing. God invites us to be loving partners, to be giving and generous, coming from the heart, an expression of devotion and tender care. There is a story of a teacher in Africa and her students wanted to honor her for her birthday. And they brought food and drink from home. And one young boy, very young boy, brought a small little bag of colorful stones collected from a creek several miles from the village. And she knew they were from an area far away. And she said to the little boy, thank you so much. These are beautiful but you had to travel so far to find them. And the little boy replied, the long walk is part of the gift. The long walk is part of the gift. The long walk with God in faith is our most precious gift to offer our hearts, our lives to receive the blessing and knowledge of his assurance and pardon, his peace and his love. May we have eyes to see and ears to hear what God would have us to see and hear and experience this day. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, amen. Our song of reflection is Seek Ye First. Let us go to God in prayer. O Lord, most gracious and holy, we come before you this Valentine, remembering those who have witnessed throughout the generation 
of their great love for you and how it was multiplied in their love for each other. Oh God, help us to know that this is so much more than hearts and chocolates. It is restoring our great love for you and in turn expressing that love to one another. Help us, O oh God, to know that love and giving are hand in hand and that love and obedience to your commands go hand in hand and that your highest and greatest command is that we would love you and love one another even as we love ourselves. Help us, O oh God, to express that gratitude, that grace, and that pardon. Help us to embody forgiveness and healing and reconciliation. Forgive us, O oh God, when we have failed. Help restore us. Help heal us. O oh Lord, we pray for any who suffer this day because of illness or grief or loss. We lift up those especially needing an extra measure of your support and your healing presence. O oh God, we are so grateful for your great love in Jesus Christ in which you came in person to be amongst us, to reveal to us not only your great love, but the potential we have as your beloved. We offer all of these prayers in the name of Jesus who taught us to pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Let us stand now for our closing song, Great is Thy Faithfulness.
we receive God's blessing and benediction, I simply remind you that we do receive our offering at the pedestals as you exit. And also for those who are watching online, uh, your support and generosity have been wonderful and continue that through our online giving as well. We're so grateful to each of you. May God bless you and keep you and make his face to shine upon you and grant you his assurance, his peace, his pardon and love. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, amen. <laughs>